Let us continue our story now for the case of cyclotomic polynomial. Previously, we have seen that in the case of a quadratic polynomial, we can use a congruence condition to describe the set of prime p such that f split over p. In other words, the reciprocity law in this case was just given by a congruence condition. Let's see if it's the same for the case of a cyclotomic polynomial. It turns out that the answer is yes. The set of primes that the cyclotomic polynomial split over can be given by a congruence condition. So let us see why. First, let's review the definition of a cyclotomic polynomial. A cyclotomic polynomial is just the minimal polynomial of the primitive nth roots of unity. Now we want to describe the set of O primes P such that the cyclotomic polynomial split over P. In other words, we want to describe the set of primes P such that the cyclotomic polynomial splits completely modulo p, i.e. all of its roots lie in fp. To this end, we need to understand what its roots are in fp. We claim that its roots in fp are still primitive nth roots of unity in fp. In other words, we claim that alpha is a root of this n cyclotomic polynomial inside fp, if and only if n is the multiplicative order of alpha in fp star. In other words, n is the smallest integer d, such that alpha to the d is congruent to 1 modulo p. So let's see why that is. Observe though that this definition always holds true for q bar. Just by definition of this n cyclotomic polynomial, we know that an element a in q bar is a root of the n cyclotomic polynomial, if and only if it's a primitive nth root of unity, i.e. it must have multiplicative order n. Now that discussion gives us the following factorization in Zx. This is because the right hand side and the left hand side have the same roots over q bar. Observe that an element alpha of q bar is the root of the right hand side, if and only if it has order dividing m. But from what we just said about q bar, that is just equivalent to saying that alpha is a root of some d cyclotomic polynomial for some d dividing m. Thus, we have this factorization over zx. Now, this factorization should also hold if we reduce everything mod p. But then that would mean that for alpha in fp, this chain of reasoning should still hold. And if we read it slightly differently, we get that alpha in fp is a root of the d cyclotomic polynomial if and only if alpha to the m is going to be equal to 1 for all m divisible by d. That is equivalent to saying that d is the smallest number such that alpha to the d is congruent to 1 in fp, which is then just equivalent to saying that the order of alpha in fp star is equal to d. Now coming back, we want to find a condition for all the zeros of this cyclotomic polynomial to lie in fp. From our previous discussion, we know that these zeros are just elements of order n in fp star, so this condition is just equivalent to fp star containing an element of order n. If it contains just one element, then it will contain the full subgroup generated by those elements, and that will account for all the zeros of this n cyclotomic polynomial in the algebraic closure of fp. So when does fp star contain an element of order n? Well, remember, fp star is cyclic of order p minus 1. So by property of cyclic group, we know that it contains an element of order n if and only if n divides p minus 1. Thus now, coming back to our story, we see that we have found a congruence condition. Thus, we see that the n cyclotomic polynomial split over p if and only if n divides p minus 1. In other words, our reciprocity law for the case of cyclotomic polynomial is given by a congruence condition modulo n. Up next, we ask if reciprocity law can always be given by a congruence condition. Or more generally, when can it be given by a congruence condition? And that will lead us to the story of class field theory. So stay tuned.